your friend Shane, baby, go. I don't have my hat on, but I gotta put it on as soon as I get done with this. Do you like to jive? What the fuck is this I'm listening to? It's a heavy metal podcast, dude. Not your average podcast. With cool people talking to cool people about cool things. Jive, baby, honey, girl, honey, baby, baby, Valentine. Boy, that really felt a shit. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I, hey, it takes a big person to admit when you're wrong and when you screw things up. And I really screwed that up. Welcome. This is the, the hardest hitting heavy metal podcast, heavy metal news podcast you're ever going to hear in your life, I, w- I would dare say. Uh, this is a no request zone. I got that right out. Um, Miss Althea, Miss Althea, she's going to be so happy with me. That I got that right out. This is a no request zone. Anywhere else on this channel, you can put your requests in, um, but not here. Bol- uh, breaking bulletin: special alert to you, fine people that tune into this podcast on the early, like when it comes out. In about two hours from now, we are going to be launching the uh, "In Loving Memory of Eric Carr" video, where we go through his life. Which, what does that mean? Uh, uh, we read Wikipedia, but I've got all sorts of groovy clips in there. So if you're listening to this now, shortly, you go and have some ham and eggs. Uh, you have some, uh, pancakes or whatever, uh, maybe a brunch. And then that video will be ready to go in loving memory of Eric Carr. I know Miss Althea will watch it. She loves Eric Carr. She might like Eric Carr more than I do. Did you see the video that we did about um, Forever? And I told that story, that very touching story about, you, you know, what happened to me. Well, you can go listen to that, uh, watch that. Welcome, welcome one and all to another edition, 156, 156 episodes of this fine podcast right here. Uh, we've got Jason Bonham. He was kicked out of Sammy Hagar's band. He had to take that little break and then all of a sudden Sammy said, I think I'm going to not have you in the band anymore, so we're going to get into that. Ozzy Osbourne, he's fighting against uh, hunters. He doesn't like. He doesn't want you hunting. Ingve is going to be selling us some multivitamins, which I'm. I'm. I, I do take a multivitamin, so I'm pretty happy about that. And then we're going to just briefly check in with Paul Diano. They have finally laid him to rest, um, and w- you know he's right there. And we're going to get into that. But I welcome you one and all to uh, this this wonderful podcast that we have here and. Uh, and I didn't mean that when I was saying uh, I'm not talking to cool people, you know, in the little tune that I played there at the beginning. And I said something about this isn't a podcast where you talk, you know, talk to cool people about cool things because you guys are cool. And I have not even got the uh, uh, freaking this this there might be an edit in this because I forgot completely to get the uh, comments. Uh, the, uh, jive talking. 155. You see that thick lady there? My heavens to Betsy. See, this is like entering the third realm of hell, really, when you're sitting here watching yourself do a podcast about a podcast. Translate to English. We got someone. We got to translate to English. Wow. Okay. I think I'm going to try this, guys. This is the. Is this the worst podcast? Read more. We got to read more. Uh, we got to read more. Uh, do we got to read more? We got to read more. Do we got to read? Show less. Well, that's Johnny B. We, show, we could show less of that. All right. Let's get into it. This isn't the most polished podcast in the world, you guys. Jeez. And don't look at none of those comments because we're not even getting to that part yet, okay? What do you think? This is some kind of professional situation here? How dare you tune into my podcast and think that it's going to be any kind of good thing? 
I'm already losing it, but big story here. Stephen Piercy, you hear him? Rap. With two T's. I think he might be throwing out some stuff to old Nikki Six there because he says uh, Motley Crue wouldn't want to play after Rat on a hypothetical joint tour. I'll tell you that. So I wanted to see what he had to say. He's looking just about the same as he always has, right? I mean, for something tells me that this guy's going to live like Keith Richards. I mean, he's going to be around a long time and he's going to look exactly like that. But let's get into Stephen Piercy here in a new interview with Greg Prato of All Music, Rat. Singer Stephen Piercy was asked if there has been any attempt to reunite the surviving members of the band's classic lineup to tour in support of the Out of the Cellar. Oh, reissue. No. Uh, we don't care about reissues. Out of the Cellar, reissue, or the box set from last year. Stephen responded, I, have, I had made those attempts, and some of my guys... They're complacent in some of them. It's never, ever a matter of not needing to, to financially. It's a matter of some of them don't have the drive that I do. And he's got drive. He had all them back problems and everything else, but he kept going at night after night after night. And without late rat guitarist Robin Crosby, I mean, we can't, you know, Robin. How the fuck are we going to get the band back together again if we don't have Robin? who was really important in keeping the band together and keeping us directed. He was the guy who pretty much directed us. He was the guy that kept us directed and also directed us. I created it. He directed it. So you're more like a movie producer. Or no, you would be the guy that wrote the script to the movie and then Robin Crosby would be the director of that movie. I made attempts. When Prato noted that some of the people he interviewed for one of his books, I'll have you know, Mr. Mr. Piercy, World Infestation, the Rat Story, said that a reunited rat should have been include, uh, included as part of the stadium tour in 2022 with Def Leppard, Motley Crue, Poison, and Joan Jett. And asked Piercy if he agreed. The singer replied, Yeah, of course. But I'm not the one. I feel like I'm getting all my voices mixed up. Of course. But I'm not the one. It's a, it was a vote, of course. I don't think Motley Crue would want to play after us. And that's how it would have, would have settled up. That's how it would have settled up? Saddled up. You mean saddled. We still have some kind of competition out there. I'm telling you, you know. We would consider it like, what? We're going to open for you? So, yeah. We should have. It would have it made sense. I mean, I don't care if you put us third or fourth or whatever. Our motto was. Our motto. You guys got a motto. Our motto was. Go out there and beat your ass off. What? Go out there and beat your ass anyway. And if they know you're playing first, they'll come and see you first, second, third, or whatever. It will go down again, and we'll see. Like I said, I tried to get the original guys. We attempted it once, and it was like, whoa. But you pretty much called it in the book. You read, the, you read his Mr. Prato's book. He read it. The world infestation, the rat story, he actually, that's going to make Prato feel pretty good, though. He goes home to his wife. He says, Judith, you are not going to believe it. I spoke with lead singer of Rat, Stephen Piercy. She says, what is it, dear? You're, you're tearing up. He, he said he read my book. World infestation, the rat story, he said he read it. The whole thing. I, I, I just couldn't. It will go down again. We'll see. Like I said, I tried to get the original guys. We attempted it. Whoa! But you pretty much called it in your great book, The World Infestation, The Rat Story. Hmm. A real page turner. And it's like, at the end of the day, I'm the guy left standing, or going, standing, going, okay? That's cool. That's way cool, Junior. That's the way it should be. 40 year anniversary and what am I doing with my solo band is playing the record live. 
The original band never even did that. Did it? They never played the original record live. The whole thing. Who did I just see that said that they just played the whole record from beginning to end? Somebody pretty neat, but I, but I can't remember who it was. There was a news story about it. There was another thing I was going to say about Sammy Hagar. Sorry, off topic. We're moving on. Jason Bonham, he's the next story up that we're going to do here. And Sammy Hagar kicked him right out of the band. Jason Bonham, if you don't know, is the son to John Bonham, Led Zeppelin uh, fame. But there was another story I was trying to hunt down about Sammy Hagar and the mayor of Flavortown. I want to say that's that guy with the spiky hair, the big porky guy that, with the beard and he diners, drive-ins, and dashes. Uh, but there was a story about him getting taken for a million bucks. Like someone ripped him off about a million bucks, him and that, that chef. And I couldn't find that story, so I'd love to get your feedback on it for next times around. We'll just I'll just read your comments to find out what was going on with it. Uh, but I, I found that quite odd because if you've I read Sammy Hagar's book, his autobiography, and there's so many great stories in there and stuff. But this guy is a serious businessman. He did the combo wombo tequila. He bought uh, uh, he, he, apartment complexes and stuff like that, building apartment complexes. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. I think he had something to do with the original mountain bike. Like he was riding on trails or something and was like, man, we really, there needs to be a bicycle kind of made for this. And that's where the mountain bike came from. So the guy, how does, how does he get taken for a million bucks? You'll have to tell me in the comments next week. Uh, but anyways, a little bit more of this. This past February, Stephen Piertzee uh, was asked during an, an appearance on the Hook Rocks podcast. Well, who's the fellow that does it? Is his last name Hook? The Hook Rocks. Or is that like Hook of the song? Like, um, He was asked at the podcast how much it bothers him that he and the other surviving members of the band's classic lineup can't reunite one more time to perform for their fans. He responded, uh, a lot. But you know what? It just goes to show you who who really has integrity. I mean, Jesus. I think. I think Jesus. Where are we at? What's your religion? Uh, put it this way. Bobby Blotzer, the drummer of Rat, to tease, he ready to go. He's ready to go. Carlos Cavazzo, he was in Quiet Riot. He wasn't a rat. Don't tell me no fibs and no lies. Why do I feel like I've seen him in a video that we've done where he is with rat? Well, Bobby Blotzer, he is ready to rip and roll. Rat and roll. He's ready to Carlos Cavazzo. Cavazzo, former rat and quiet riot guitarist who isn't an original member, Shane. He just jammed with me recently at the Whiskey in West Hollywood. But I can't settle for less. And with a bass player who doesn't even look like the same guy, who's really, if you're not into it, what? Who's, who's really, if you're not into it, you're not into it. So Juan, he's saying Juan's a big fat fella now. That's what he's saying. And he doesn't look anything like he used to with the with the red bouffant uh, bouffant of hair that came down to the breast areas. He's not. He don't look like that. And maybe that's a little bit of that. What he's saying there is about how he's not into it because he might not be into fitness or anything like that either. And I can only have respect for Warren D. Martini, rat guitar player, for not wanting. He doesn't need to. None of these guys do. I don't need to. It's just a matter of what your drive is, I guess. I have a different drive system than my guys. And that's where the buck stops. I can't force them. I can just go. You know, this is called business. The music business. Now, it's business 40 years later. You should be very fortunate. It doesn't matter how deep your pockets are. 
It's the integrity you have for what you created. What you were a part of. That's what pisses me right the hell off. It's not the no. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm fine. It's not that. When we released the box set, The Atlantic Years, 1984 to 1991, last year, it was so cool. It was way cool. Besides looking great, and it's a great fucking package, it was due. It was about time, because that's it. That was the real rat right there, 84. Well, the EP could have been in there, too. I ain't going to lie about that. But 84 to 90 to 91, that was it. After that, no matter who we had in the band, it just wasn't right. Without late rat guitarist Robin Crosby, the director. And it wasn't going to be whether it was really flew this, the, if it really flew the second time. Although it could work now. But you don't have all the elements, the proper elements. You need the fucking elements. Like, say, Motley Crue, bring in John Five. He's gonna, he's throwing a snap at him. Like, say, hmm, Motley Crue, bring in John Five. No disrespect. When you say no disrespect, you mean disrespect. You mean not disrespect, but you mean I do want to dig at you. Give you a good diggings. No disrespect. That's not Motley Crue. Rat without Robin. I said it when when he when he wasn't playing. This isn't gonna work. We don't we can do anything we want. We can try as hard as we want. It's not gonna be the same. Well that's kind of a negative damn Nancy attitude. Stephen Peartsey, you do not need to be so damn negative. And it never was. And it never will be. All right. Let's get on to this. Maybe they'll mention this is John Bonham, you know, he's He's got his sunglasses on because he's done a bit of crying. He loves Sammy Hagar. He loved being in the, he wanted to do the Best of Both Worlds tour, and he had to, something came up, and then he says, yeah, well, we just don't want you back. Let's find out. Jason Bonham was a little shocked about being let go from Sammy Hagar's band. I mean, just the, the friendship and the passion and the love that Sammy and him have together, they were in chicken foot together. No, they weren't. Because in the article, I believe, they say that uh, they got old chicken foot guy back. It's basically chicken foot. He said, you know, you yeah, want the best. If we kick that guy out, man, dig it. We could get that other guy in and we could be chicken foot. Chicken foot a good band? I haven't listened Jason Bonham said he was, oh, I was a little bit shocked about being let go from Sammy Hagar's band for the upcoming The Best of Both Worlds tour. And the shows. The veteran rocker son of late Led Zeppelin legend John Bonham recently took part in the U.S. leg of The Best of All Worlds, which focused largely on celebrating the music of Hagar's former band Van Halen. Unfortunately, Bonham had to leave the tour with four shows remaining on the U.S. leg due to a family issue. And I thought I saw something about it was mom, and you don't fuck with mom. You shut down the entire world when mom, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? It was a sister or something. He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I'll be sure to leave roses on the... Uh, which focused largely on the Hagar Van Halen stuff. Unfortunately, Bonham had to leave the tour with four shows remaining in the U.S. leg due to a family issue. The drummer was replaced at the last several dates. He said four, not several. It's four several dates of the trek by Kenny Aronoff, who had previously played with Hagar bassist Michael Anthony and guitarist Joe Satriani in a ch ch chicken foot. Someone came in and said, Sammy, Sammy man, I, I got a great name for our band. He said, well, sit down and have some Cabo Wabo tequila with me. And, and we, a uh, mas tequila, and then uh, you, you, 
We're going to sit down and have a nice little glass of this, and you are going to tell me that bad name. Now get that. We got to have one more to freshen the lips, so would you tell me that bad name? It's chicken foot. A few days ago, Bonham revealed that he would be taking part in any, he wouldn't be taking part in any of the upcoming The Best of All Worlds while answering a fan's social media question. He answers questions from his fans. That is a nice guy. He wrote, Sammy, Sammy has decided to carry on with Kenny. Speaking to the ultimate classic rock, Bonham said, oh, I was trying to answer fans, really, because they were asking me, why aren't you involved? with that new thing they're recording. And I said, aren't you going to do it again? That's what the, the fans were asking me. And this is what I replied, I says. I was let go, so no. Sammy rang me a while ago. He was asking about me, Mom. See? Sammy's ringing you up and asking about Mum. It was Mum. And he stopped what he had to do for Mum. But then he says, You know, wabba dooba booba doo I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do much next year. Blah 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 blah. You know all that business kind of crap. That stuff that Stephen Pissy was talking about. That business stuff. I'm gonna go with Kenny. Oh, I was a little shocked, I must say. I'd be I'd be lying to you if I says I wasn't a little sad. Oh, that's why I got my sunglasses on. I got teary eyes. Because we were on fire at the end of that tour. And I got a little upset. I says, pooty. That was strange. After ten years of being with him, that's the business. It's not Sammy's feelings towards you. It's just the business. And we got to get business. Because business is important. Despite the fact that he was fired from Hagar's band, Bonham was full of praise for the le legendary rocker. Listen. Listen to me, mate. Take the goop out of your bleeding blatty ears and just give me a listen. Listen, I love the guy to bits. I'd like to chop him to bits. If... I don't wish him any ill. So what I said about getting a nice big axe and chopping him into bits, I meant none of it. I still speak to him, honestly. The guy has taught me so much about business. It's all about the business. That's what Sammy taught me. And being positive. Look, I'm an English guy. I can barely read negative half the time. What? I can be really negative half the time. What do you do the other half? Even if the sun is shining, but it could be right, but it could rain. He really helped me in the aspect of big time and business sense. Oh, Sammy's got great business sense and never taking no for an answer. He just got, uh, you know, my accent really went uh, like he, he was getting wealthier as I talked. Also, believing in yourself. So, yeah, I had a great 10 years. He allowed me to always do what I wanted to do. When me thing would, be, would get busy, he always gave me the space. I couldn't ask for more. <laughs> Earlier this month, Jason addressed his absence from the last few shows of the Best of All Worlds Tour, sharing a statement on the social media in which he said that his me, me sweet, sweet mother had been facing some serious health issues, but that she's, she was now home and recovering, which brings me immense relief. And I can't wait to get right back on the road with my dear friend, Sammy Hagar. He didn't say that part, but that's... In early September, Hagar told Guy Favaz Favaza. I almost thought it was that, that chef guy for a minute. They were going to launch into that... Man, this dude right here in his name, huh? 
If you're going to have a name like that, that's the one to have. Guy Favaz, that's your nick. That's the nickname. Guy Favaz Favaza. I'd be like Chainsaw Guy. Chainsaw Favaza of the St. Louis, Missouri radio station KSE eight KSHE ninety five about how he hooked up with Kenny. Uh, uh, oh, this is Sammy Hagar says, well, hey, yeah, let me tell you about it. Well, I've known Kenny for a long time. Kenny has been my backup drummer for about, not just me, uh, what? Well, I've known Kenny for a long time. Kenny has been my backup drummer for about, not just me, you talk to Billy Gibbons, you talk to anybody, they're going to tell you that he's their backup drummer because he's the only guy that can drive 55. He's the only guy that can hand a set list of 24, you can hand a set list of 24 songs and in 24 hours he can play them. Oh, he, that guy's really good. They go over there. Billy? Yeah, you. Oh, oh, yeah, I want it. Sammy told me to ask you about uh, about Kenny Arnoff. Now, he said that he's the back of the show. I know. I don't know. That Texas town. Well, that's a shack on fire. Hey. Oh, you know what we're talking about. Um, I, we believe you, Sammy. Okay, we believe you. We don't got to go asking everybody in damn town how great Kenny is. He feels good about it. You feel good? Great. We're on to it. Sammy clarified that he didn't know. I didn't know ahead of time that Kenny was going to be stepping in for Jason. Jason's family emergency was a sudden thing, he explained. His mother had a stroke. Oh, he didn't tell us that. That is not your place, Sammy Hagar. To announce that to the world, he said his mother was suffering from circumstances, health complications. You just dropped the bomb. His mother had a stroke and went into a coma, and it's serious. Sammy, you are a son of a bitch. So his whole family went over there to the United Kingdom. And he held out for two or three days, and he says, I got it, I got it. I said, you go. Well, thanks, Sammy. So we told Kenny. He had about 24 hours notice, and he came in the first night and by God blew the roof off the place. No, he didn't say that. He said, and he came in the first night. He got there at 6 in the morning. 6 in the morning. I wake up morning yawning. What's that song? Snoop Dogg. And they ain't leaving till six. So what you want to do? I got a pocket full of rubbers and my homeboys do too. Uh, sorry. Jesus. Someone right now. I told you, dude, he's fucking false metal, dude. He just, on his fucking podcast just now, he just sang Snoop Doggy Dog from the album Doggy Style, dude. He just did it. And don't ask me why I know what album it came from. Everyone knows that tune because it, it was on MTV. Jesus. And it was also on the only good Snoop Doggy Dog record, which was Doggy Style. Anyways. He had about 24 hours notice. So he came in the first night, and my God, he did it. He got there six in the morning. We played that night in Cincinnati. And he did a 90% perfect show. I swear to you. I make more mistakes every night than he did. So that's a big hats off to this guy. Aronoff replaced Chad Smith. That's a chili pepper, guys, in Chickenfoot, touring lineup, 2011 to 2012. Smith was forced to step away for his mother. Smith was forced to step away from Chickenfoot touring activities due to his commitments with the Red Hot. <laughs> That's the Chili Boys. 
Jason Bonham spent nearly a decade touring with Jason Bonham's Led Led Zeppelin experience before changing the band's name to Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Evening. God, both of those are terrible. Bonham later explained that the switch was prompt, prompted by a request from the Led Zeppelin camp. He is the son of the goddamn drummer, and the Led Zeppelin camp is asking him to change it who wanted to use the experience name for a project involving the archive of Zepp. Okay, so you change it to something worse. Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Experience. Okay, Jason Bonham's Led Zeppelin Experience was formed in 2009 to pay tribute to Bonham's father, legendary Led Zeppelin drummer John Bonham, who died 1980 at the age of 32. How weird is that to live longer than your father did? You know, they, she says, Shane, I might have a bit of tears under my eyes here, but you ain't got to go bleeding telling everybody about it. Now, do you in your, your shitty-ass podcast what you do over there by yourself and your lonelies? And ain't nobody around. You're just sitting there talking to your damn self, you damn fool. And you're talking about me crying eyes oh, of what you did. Let's get into it. Ozzy, really quick. Look at him there. My God. She says, Ozzy, put this shirt on. <laughs> Just put this shirt on, Ozzy. What, what, what is it? <laughs> just put it on, Ozzy. Don't, don't even look at it, Ozzy. And then just nod your head when I tell you what to say. He's grimacing there. I mean, but honestly, A, he's sitting next, next to a glass of water instead of a nice big frothing cup of mead or beer or whatever. You ever see that drunken video of him where from the uh, Osbournes where he comes out of the room and he goes, so, 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 somebody's been in my fridge drinking my beers. And she says, oh, I see no one's been in our bedroom drinking your beers. You drink him, you drunk. Here's, here's me card, Sharon. Just go sh sh shopping. Am I a little ratty today? I feel like I'm being a little, little, little aggro. Anyways, this is about banning trophy hunting. They don't want you, is that, now it's not, hunting is okay. They don't want where you saw the heads off and hang them on your wall and you're, in your man cave. That's what they're pissed about. And I'm not going to say what I'm thinking right now, but look at the neck right there. Boy, I'm not going to say it, but, you know, I mean, no. I'm going to put it right back and leave it back there. Trophy hunting. Um, but Ozzy, he's sitting there, he's dead sober, and she's got, she's got him in a white t-shirt. Terrible. You, that was a cheap t-shirt they made. When you put them on white like that, it's instantly, you're going for the discount price. Ozzy Osbourne designs, uh-oh, ban trophy hunting t-shirt to ensure a future free of these sick, these sick maniacs. Oh, what do they do, Ozzy? They, they cut the heads off. And they hang them on the wall. Oh, Ozzy. Uh, an exclusive t-shirt designed by, designed by Ozzy. I apologize, guys, saying that sucked and it's not good. Because Ozzy Osbourne made that. So I take that all back. An exclusive t-shirt designed by Ozzy Osbourne is on sale to support the campaign to ban trophy hunting. Speaking out this week to launch the t-shirt, the Black Sabbath frontman and his wife, manager, X-Factor legend. She's an X-Factor legend? Sharon Osborne shared their disgust that the vile UK trophy hunters are still allowed by law to bring animal parts back to the UK from countries including Africa and beyond. I mean, Africa's got all those good animals that you want their heads. Don't they? I mean, it's just like, who cares about it? It's, you know, you're not impressed by a freaking deer. 
If you go over to your buddy's house, he's like, oh, what do you got? A bunch of deer and oh, you got an elk and you got a, oh, you got a quail that's stuffed and all this stuff. You go over to somebody's house and they got a freaking rhino on the wall. You're like, my God, you, you, you know, there's a difference in hunting there. And also this is the UK. They don't really like uh, guns. So this is the only time they can get their hands. Oh, bleeding bloody hell. Get me another box of them shells. I've got to shoot this gun all I can before i got to take it back to the... Isn't that the case? Like you got to... I don't know. Ozzy. Ozzy, who is signing a number of these t-shirts. Well, that'd be worth it now. Which will be auctioned to raise funds for the campaign said, Trophy hunters are totally crazy. Fucking crazy. You got to be barking to a you got to be barking to kill an innocent animal and then take photos of yourself laughing about it, you bleeding bloody pigs. I mean after you saw the head off a giraffe or something like that, are you smiling about it? Are you happy about it? And how do you get that in the vehicle for one? And how do you hang that up in your house? You gotta have them huge vaulted ceilings for a giraffe, because you want some of that neck. You can't just have the head. You know? No one's going to believe you unless you have at least eight feet. No, six feet. you got to be barking to kill an animal like that. And then you're sitting over there laughing about it with your bleeding bloody friends. We've all got to do our bit. It's like Design things, so I've done. So I've done a T-shirt. It's I like to design. I like to design things. I do. So I've done a T-shirt for the campaign to ban trophy hunting. The government said it would ban hunting trophies. So get on with it. Tell your MP you want it banned right now. So Sharon, get yourself an Aussie T-shirt for Christmas. Oh, for your little ones and all that and stuff, and have and help save animals. Sharon, who sported Ozzy in a heartwarming video, released this is all heartwarming, and now I'm a bastard making fun of it. In a heartwarming video released this week to back the ban, added, Ozzy and I are big supporters of the campaign to ban trophy hunting. We really hope everyone buys this T-shirt at $79.99 and helps raise funds to fight these awful people. I can't think of anything more sickening than killing an animal just for the fun of it and then putting its big long head up in your living room. I honestly thought those days had gone. Let's make trophy hunting extinct, not wildlife. Support the campaign and tell the politicians you want the ban done today, not tomorrow. I, th I, I read somewhere. Uh, no, I didn't read somewhere, but I heard somewhere. And tell me if this is true. That if you could fit all of the gorillas in the world on a plane, they would all fit on a plane. That's how many gorillas, great apes, are left on this planet. Is if it was practical to fit them in to about the length of a airplane, a 747, I guess, they would all fit on there. Is that, can you snopes that for me and tell me? Let's give wildlife the best Christmas gift of all. A future free of these sick maniacs. The t-shirts will be available to buy at www.bandtrophyhunting.org. Well, I've seen in a couple of episodes of The Osbournes, Ozzy was actually sitting at a table drawing. Why didn't you do that, Oz? This is kind of like a quick Photoshop, dude. Where's the free... How do I get over to images on Google, Sharon? Oh, John, let me do it, Ozzy. You, just up at the top there, you click the thing that says images. I'm looking for a tiger head for me, me shirt that I'm designing. She says, all right, but well, good luck with that, Aussie. Oh, wait, before you go, I need the no sign, too. Where do I, what do I put in for that? 
he could have painted something up really beautiful. Let's talk to Bruce Kulik really quick here. This dude, he's got the scoobs. Every time I see this image, I say, this dude's got the scooby snacks. And he sells them 20 bucks a bag. He doesn't do them, you know, them high prices or whatever, them, you know, exorbitant. He says, man, whatever gets you through, man, I'm here to help you out. I got to get you a dime bag, get you a 20 bag. If you're feeling really spendy, I get you a 30 bag. But quickly, we're going to do this and get into Ingve's multivitamins, which I'm very interested about. Uh, Bruce Kulik says his era of KISS has ran its course, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, in a brand new interview with Loaded Radio from KISS guitarist Bruce Kulik was asked why he wasn't uh, even approached to rejoin the band after Ace Freely left. We're not going to get into all that horse bananas, uh, but uh, didn't get back in the band in 2001. He responded, that's a great question. And I'm not even aware, and I'm not even aware of some of the back history. I would hear things about them having problems with Ace, and Ace was getting erratic or difficult, and later Kiss guitarist Tommy Thayer was actually tour managing with them. Yep, because he was in a great band called Black and Blue, and then Gene produced the Nasty Nasty record from Black and Blue, and while doing so, he said, this band ain't going nowhere, and they had a great big hit called I'll Be There For You that was on MTV, and it was on there taking off about the same time as into the night was with Ace Fraley, and um, he said, you should be my assistant and get me coffee and get me cereal with ice cubes in it, stuff like that. And he was actually tour managing them. He was on the road with them because even during my era, he was involved with the band, helping with history and doing things for the group. He wrote some of the songs with Gene Simmons, Kiss bassist and the vocalist, The Demon, and was always part of the inner circle, and I shall, shall I say. So, from, from what I understood, there was one of the two things that KISS did. Not a con- what? There was one of two things that KISS did. Not a concert, even though once Ace was almost not going to make it, and they, ha- and they made Tommy get the outfit on. He had a similar build. You got a good build too, buddy. Don't knock your build. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm really over it. I love you, Bruce, and I couldn't agree more with you on, on really everything that you say. He says, man, thanks a lot, bro. That means a lot. Coming from you, Shane, that means a hell of a lot. Let's get into Ingve here. Now, we want to be very gingerly with Ingve because I've heard that he does the same kinds of things that Danzig does, if you get my drift. Uh, if he's unhappy with the, his portrayals. So I'm just reading the story, Ingve, okay? I'm, I'm, you're selling multivitamins. You may have a customer here. You don't know it, all right? So just please leave my little podunk channel alone. Please, thank you, I love you. Rock on with your banana yellows. There he is, Ingve, beautiful uh, shirt, uh, breast. His breasts are out. He's got that beautiful big crucifix on there to say, Once I love my Jesus, he is the greatest love for me. And he's got his banana yellows. And you know, when those eyes are closed, he's ripping one for you. He's making you, you believe in magic again. Okay? Ingve steps into the world of health and wellness with his own multivitamin supplemental gummies. Now, I hope that Ingve is going to tell me that there's not only gummies, because I like to just take the regular pill instead of chewing up a little gummy bear. <clears throat> Get away. Look at this, I got me a different kind. I like to tell my drinks, get over here. Get over here so I can pop you. This is kind of a mango. It's called the mango chainsaw, if you really need to know. The mango chainsaw. Just great flavor. I have to tell you that. Ingve Malmsteen, the legendary rock star and guitarist virtuoso, 
known for his lightning-fast solos and neoclassical style, has stepped into the world of health and wellness with his latest creation, the Yingve Malmsteen Force. Yingve Malmsteen's Force. Multivitamin, supplemental, gummies. According to a post on Swedish Musician's official uh, merchandise web store, his merchandise web store, Yngwie.com, is that where we go? Yngwie's vocal focus on peak performance extends beyond music and into personal well-being. His new line of multivitamin gummies is designed for those who, like him, demand the best from their bodies. With his bold stage presence and light, oh, did he write this? With his bold stage presence and his life fueled by passion and intensity, Ingwe knows the importance of maintaining energy and health. These multivitamin gummies are packed with essential vitamins and nutrients, providing the perfect boost to keep anyone feeling powerful and focused and ready to conquer the day. Yingwis believes that feeling good and healthy is vital. Whether you're shredding on the guitar or managing daily life and sub the bills, and you come home and you realize that the fucking bills weren't paid. So you can... You know. Pardon me, where were we? Whether you're shredding on the guitar or managing daily life, these gummies are formulated to support a strong immune system. Enhanced energy for fighting and punching and kicking. And promote overall wellness. All in a tasty Rockstar approved form. I could see Ingbe in there testing him. This is the Mr. Mr. Ingbe. This is the great flavor of oh, this shit. This is the raspberry one. shit. One of the things that I'll tell you right now, and I hope he's not paying attention to this, but one of the things I heard that he doesn't like where he hits was when they do videos about the time that, I guess, Dimebag Daryl and Pantera offered him some donuts. This was like many, 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 many moons ago, of course. But there's a brief little snippet of that happening where they're like, hey, you want some donuts? He's like, oh, no, fuck, I like a donuts. I don't want no goddamn donuts. And so I heard that he does not like that. Now, I'll tell you this, Ingve. Before you go and do anything crazy, I think you're great. All right? And if you don't like fucking donuts, it's fine. You know. It would be a little different if Pantera is actually offering up donuts. But, you know, you could have took the donut. Oh, thank you, Dimebag. I just, oh, yum, 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 yum. I'll eat it. Because he goes right into his dress room, dressing room and shuts the door. And they kind of go, he doesn't like donuts. But you could have got back there in your dressing room and said, I can fuck at the donuts. Anyways, please don't hurt me. In August 23, he posts on his old official Facebook page. He's got an official Facebook page. Ingbe shared a picture of his guitar along with three of his vitamin gummies. And he included the following message. The secret to my force over the past 40 years isn't what you think. Vitamins. I am super healthy conscious. I wake up early, play tennis. I can play with someone or against the wall, you know, so I can smack it and it bounces the wall and come back. Play tennis, taking my vitamins and drive my car, spend my time with my family and make music for you guys. Ingbe's 40th anniversary tour kicked off September 26th in Fort Myers, Florida. And we'll conclude on November 22nd at is today in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Are you going to the show? Get in the comments and say, Shane, I'm just leaving right now. I thought I'd just jot you down a quick message. Support on the trek is coming from singer-songwriter Kurt Demir. Okay, I don't know what that is. And we move on to this. Rest in peace, Paul Diano. Finally laying him 
to rest. It says, let's raise a glass for the last time for Paul to, you know, I'll raise my damn mango chainsaw, baby cakes. His funeral was today, and this picture is published by the approval of his family. Thanks to everyone today, and thanks Castro Perigioni for a beautiful afternoon at Carts and Horses. Oh, they went to the racetracks in long, in long memory of Paul. Rest in peace, dear sir. You will not be forgotten. It is time, my friends, for the for your comments. We don't worry about the uh, clock anymore. We don't worry about that battery anymore. And if you make it this far in, you're you're stellar. You're fantastic. And uh, for my money, this is where it starts to get really good because now I feel now I'm having a conversation with you instead of just talking to myself and being a damn moron. Okay, Mike Buchanan, 69er, indeed. Yes, there he is, the 69er himself. And he's doing a movie from 96. This week's movies that are bad, but we love them anyways, continues on from last week's Escape from New York to Escape from L.A., 1996. I believe this to be the only sequel John Carpenter's ever directed. Is that a thing, really? You might be right, now that I think about it. He don't do no sequels, does he? Was it as good as the original? No. Was it as equally deserving the title of cult classic as the original? Yes. Escape from L.A. is a strange one. It is campy enough to be considered a B-movie and filled with enough A-listers behind, uh, behind and in front of the camera to not be considered one. As with Escape from New York, this one features Snake Plissken, once again adeptly played by Kurt Russell, who has no problem getting into the same boots even after a gap of 15 years. Really? Being asked by the American government in assisting them to find something. In this case, a doomsday device, E-F-L-A, Polarized Critics. Oh, you did that, that acronym thing. Polarized critics and audiences, and it e it is easy to see why, but, <laughs> sorry, pardon me, Mr. 69er, sorry about that. Uh, easy to see, but uh, still, this film is worthy of a shot. If you all remember from this film, if all you remember from this film is a surf scene down the L.A. River, then the movie did you right. Peter Fonda. For the win. Peter Fonda. I know Peter Fonda. He's the old poo on Golden Pond. Have you ever seen that movie? Or is that Henry Fonda that I'm thinking of? Peter Fonda it was uh, the guy in Hitching Motor Running. Henry Fonda. He was the old poo. Oh, you old poo. What do you say we suck face? If you ever seen it on Golden Pond, go watch that movie and then get in the comments and tell me what you think of that. And again, someone say, this guy, I'm telling you, dude, he is not heavy metal, dude. He fucking was talking about Snoop Doggy Dog and a goddamn romantic movie from the fucking 80s. L.A. River, then you might, it did you right. Peter Fonda for the win. Grab your favorite beverage. Sit in your favorite chair. Pop some popcorn and press play. Shane, while I wish for you to have a huge success. Really, you do? And with that more polished platform, I will yearn for the days of old and the Shane we all grew to love. Mistakes and all. Oh, no, I, this is it. As does most 80s metal kids who look back to the days when metal ruled the world. Two world. I'm, I'm going to say ruled the world. Thank you for that. Mike Buchanan, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I'm sorry, but you guys know how long it took me to get the extension cord. We're on episode 156. 
Mike Buchanan here says Megaforce Records is the soundtrack of my youth with bands like, as you said, Metallica, Overkill, S.O.D., Raven, as well as Testament, Man o War, Skid Row, to lesser known bands like T.T. Quick, Meat Puppets, and when I wake up in the morning, to go do, to feel the sunshine on my face, to go do, is that them? I feel like that's them. Blue cheer. I have many fond memories of jamming out in my room and with friends. Imaginary friends are real friends. Did you know that Gary Holt is a vegan? No. I'm surprised he didn't write about that in his upcoming book. I kid, of course. Don't think that I will be reading Gary's book. I used to read like crazy, like four or five books a month. That is crazy. And you're a fast reader. Sometimes two, three books at the same time. Oh, that's, I can't do that. There's no way I could do that. I've kind of gone away from that. Probably not forever, but for now, I'm... I'm more into music and movies. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, that's a lot of books. So, you know, you might have just wore yourself out on it. Uh, Mike Buchanan on Michael Schenker. Is this going to be another one of those concerts that doesn't pay tribute to all the former members of Scorpions? He was like 16 when he played on the first Scorpions record, Lonesome Crow. I think he needs to get over being in the shadow of his older brother. And just do the one show, then move on. That's true. But, I mean, if Rudolph's a real jerk to him, he doesn't want to give him any, you know, he doesn't want to give him anything. Mike Buchanan says, Yet more books that I will not read. Sorry, Max. You're not going to read Max Cavalera's book. Make more music. That I will listen to. And now it's time for the, my, the Mike Buchanan's Jive Talk and uh, Jokes of the Week. Wife making van vacation plans. Plan Plan A. We were dr be, uh, what? Plan A will be driving, and Plan B will be flying. Me raising my hand. Wife, yes. Me, shouldn't Plan B the Plan E? Wife, get out. I will do this myself. I don't get it. What are you talking about? Plan B, B, Plan E. What do you call a laughing motorcycle? A Yamaha ha ha. Apparently you can't use beef stew as a password. It's not strong enough. That's good. What's the German word for bra? Stop them from flopping. Stop, stop them from flopping. That's a town guaranteed out there. Stop them from flopping. And finally, a telemarketer called and asked to speak to whoever runs the household. So I passed the phone to my dog. Heard a lot of barking and growling and then, we, and then he hung up. My damn dog hung up because he has an opposable thumb. It was a, he was born that way. There's your heart, my friend. We got, oh, let's, okay, we've got some new folks in here, guys. We got Jimmy Piranha. Oh, yeah, Jimmy Piranha. One heart received and eight comments. Very good there, buddy. You're getting another heart here today, Jimmy Piranha. By the by, Can't Hurry Love was originally done by the Supremes. Mmm, yes, he's talking about Phil Collins when I sang that so beautifully in the last episode. A newsman's suit jacket would be a good look for these new segments. I mean, you know, I could I could put on a sport jacket of some sort. It'd have to come from a thrift store. I don't own anything like that. Um, but great to meet you, Jimmy Piranha. Come on back now. No edit book reviews. No edit book reviews. They do no editing. They just they just put them right out the door. I just watched your bathtub fart video. Laugh my ass off. That was great. It's about 13 seconds long, and it was one of, it's a really old video, because I probably got another 70 pounds on me, and I just let a little stinker in the tub, in the, in the water. 
And thank you for that. No edit book reviews. It's all unabridged there, right? Uh, oh, the central scrutinizer coming in. Hey, Shane, since you're a big typo negative fan, check out the band Neon. Oh. I bet you that's somebody saying no request. Let's see what he says. Oh, the band. Since you're a big typo negative fan, check out the band Neon Nightmare. Promethean gift. Trust me, you'll like it. I thought I saw an article where someone had mentioned a band that sounded just like they're they're going on they're like straight going yeah we're we're trying to be like typo negative so maybe that's a band well you're not getting the heart for that buddy I gotta let you keep you hanging there now Miss Althea somebody has gotten in there and and said you may have missed the uh, the, the 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 rules here buddy and. Uh, you know, hey, rules are rules, guys, right? I can't be, if, if, we, if we let a few of them go, then all of a sudden, this whole damn thing, I got to go hunt through 8,000 comments to find you guys that are just leaving your real true thoughts and opinions. Miss Althea coming in here, the dumbstruck fool, says, anytime anything comes up about Megaforce, which is infrequently, the first thing that jumps into my mind is an episode of Morton Downey Jr.'s show where Ace and Scott Ian were among the guests. The subject of women in rock came up. Oh, and someone, I believe, Scotty Ian, blurted out, Megaforce Records is run by a woman. Oh, I think I may still have it on tape somewhere. Well, there you go, buddy. He's ahead of the times then. Because Morton Downey Jr. is like, Get the hell out of here. You're telling me that a goddamn woman is running a business? Ah, get the hell out of here. So good on him. Um, I re would have recorded it at the time only because of Ace. And I am sure it must exist on YouTube. Haven't seen the footage in 20 years, if not longer. Miss Althea on Gary Holt. Hatchet book... Books Publishing, a memoir from a guy who used to be in Slayer. Really? Too creepy? Yeah. Hatchet Slayer. Is there a movie called that? There should be. Trademark. I'm going to make a horror movie called Hatchet Slayer. Too creepy to be a coincidence. The title is too long. Take it from someone who has to work on ad copy as a very small part of her job. I am also getting very tired of this trend of cringe in the modern day vernacular. Of the word cringe, it's one thing. That's my son told me that he says, "Yeah, you're kind of cringe, cringe comedy." That's not a good thing, is it? It's one thing to hear from a Gen Z or a millennial, but a Gen X boomer, I think Gary is around the same age as me, is well, you know, cringe. Okay. Miss Althea on the Shanker Brothers, you know, what are you going to do? Two words, family therapy. Either that or just break clean. Just because you are related by blood doesn't mean you are obligated to love each other or so much as like each other. A toxic relationship is a toxic relationship, period. 100%. You know, if you, if you, the minute the phone rings and you look over and you dread, get it. Just cut ties, you know. Just cut ties with it. Um, oh, Miss Althea on James Lomenzo, the fine bass player for White Lion. He was also on uh, The Amazing Race. I may happen to tune that uh, that season in again. I think they're on about five or six episodes before they get canned. Uh, James Lomenzo, a guess, a surreal career, in quotes, uh, would about sum it up. To go from White Lion to Ace Freely solo band for a minute. I witnessed the fir that firsthand, though, to Megadeth. Did I just say that weird? To Megadeth. To a re reality competition show. Yeah, I would say he's been around the block. 
And I'll tell you another fun thing that happens to those, to Abba and to James Lomenzo. And thank God it doesn't happen to James Lomenzo. But in one episode of the show, they're in India. And they're in a very hectic uh, part of India. Well, they want to get the, uh, it's called a speed pass or whatever, where if they, uh, if they do this task, they can go straight to the very end and get on the mat or do whatever, you know. They get a pass, pass at all the rest of the teams. And so the task at hand is to collect five rats each because they're everywhere. So you got to collect five dead rats and bring it back to this guy, and he'll give you the clue to the, where you got to go. Well, while doing so, Abba, who's with him, stepped in what looks to be a a a stream of urine and fecal matter, and plunges his foot down in it, and is like, "Oh my God, oh my God!" I think I. So he's got like get that shoe off and clean his foot off. Before he gets, you know, I don't know. But just a fun episode. If you guys are ever interested, because it's fun. James Lomenzo is standing next to a man who just dipped his foot in the in the in the fucking shit stream. And he's going, oh shit. Oh Abba. Oh, oh, it's, oh my god, my foot just went in poo-poo and pee-pee. Anyways, uh the Shanker Brothers, two fam, you know, hey. Work on it. Toxic relationships, period. James, a guest, surreal life, you bet. Um, uh, yeah, he's been around the block. Jesus, i got to find my thoughts. I'm still thinking about Abba's foot plunging down in that stuff. And I think James has kind of kneeled over like, oh, jeez. Boy, it really went, it went to the ankle, didn't it? Um... Miss Althea on Johnny B's KISS plan. Dude, officially drafted up. Patented it. If Gene would allow would allow it, then ra ram up a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe campaign. I would be a stakeholder. There you go. Uh, pro prosthesis. Okay, yes. Um, I was speaking about someone who loses the legs, and it is a prosthesis, was the definition for fake leg, in quotes she's got here, that was escaping you. Yes, not fake leg. That doesn't sound very good. I sure do wish you would, uh, someone would chime in with um, who, what that movie was about. Do you remember the movie with the guy, and he was walking across the world, but he didn't have legs? He was walking across the country. Uh, Miss Althea says, I apologize for getting you all muddled on the kick song title. The opening track on their Blow My Fuse album is, in fact, Red Light, Green Light, TNT. It's a banger. Just saying. Okay. I'm going to go listen to that album, I think, because I love every song I've heard from it. Not that I've heard, I don't know if I've heard them all or whatever, but man, I feel like kick should have really been more... Shout out to Johnny B for finding me. This is Miss Althea. Shout out to Johnny B for finding me within the comments of the Kiss Sub on Reddit. Hey! There you go. We got John Heffron here. He says, Sam Garlson, dot, 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 Gamulson, and then a laughy emoji. I was goofing that, uh, what does it say? Translate to English. He's, re he's referring to uh, me trying to spit out the drummer who, uh, from Megadeth, and I couldn't remember the name. There you go, buddy. There's your heart. Johnny B, the B man, coming in here. Why did I think I saw two comments from. Sorry, Johnny, I did not mean to just kind of glaze past you like you did not matter. Uh, first and foremost, well, we're moving on up. Moving on up to the east side. We're moving on up to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on up to the east side. We finally got a piece of the And then he kicked the door. Ouija! You know, he's so pissed off all the time. What did he call what did he call that his neighbor, his white neighbor up? Honky? Was it just honky? 
the singing bit you did during the comments is, uh, is of course, the theme song from the Jeffersons. Yes, indeed. Amazing show. Good times. Good times. Temporarily. Uh, shout out to Thelma, my first crush. Really? Taxi. Three's Company, Soap, Hill Street Blues. All of these are on Tubi. I just started to get it a taxi, and then my concentration just went, oh, I can't, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for this right now. But all of those shows, I do believe, I know Soap is, and Taxi, they're all on that Tubi. It's a free app. It's great. Just a few, just a few I remember that were awesome from the time, from that time frame. Uh, I also liked um, Barney Miller. Just takes place in a in a what do you call it? De uh, are they detectives? What are they? Plain clothes cops. Just a side no. Just a side bit to my imaginary kiss reimagined from the last week. Yes, and then Miss Althea says she's on board. She's a stockholder. She's she's on it. The only song that will be played at these shows are from the 1970s album, and the cutoff would be the Dynasty album. Like you were saying, when you come into the Kiss Alive concert series, it would be like you're walking into 1975. Yes, that's what I want. And when you come to the Kiss Alive 2 show, it's like you're in 1977 vibe. I really think they could do this and really send the epic Kiss legacy off with a bang. It's way better idea than, than digital shit. I don't care how good it is. It, no, it's just not worth it. I think Gene would say, Oh yeah! To that idea. Paul might say, No! Oh, 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 to it, but that's okay. We know who wears the pants around there. For the longest time, I thought Gene Simmons was the boss. And then the first thing that led me off was uh, Gene Simmons' book, then it was Paul Stanley's book, and then it was that little clip, if you've ever seen it, of they're doing an interview. It's Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons, and they're doing an interview. It's it's They're in the no-makeup years or whatever. But um, Paul says something snarky to him, and Gene ask the camera guy, hey, stop for a minute. Are you, could, would you stop being so mean to me? Or something like that. And I went, whoa! Gene. Paul's like, yeah, I'll do whatever I want to you. I'm the boss around here. I wear the big boy pants. I wear the pants, Gene. You lost that when you went and made your fucking movies, okay? Forget about it. I'm the boss man. Uh, I really think you should tell us what big scoop you got under your hat. You teased this a couple of times throughout the show, and I'm extremely interested in what it is. Maybe a Patreon discussion? I mean, the only thing that I'm concerned about is... It just, you know, it's just getting out of the Patreon. You know, it's like, oh, I just copy and paste that and say, hey, here's what. And it's all, it's all kind of stuff that I don't, you know. It was an interesting nugget that I heard. And, and, and Ace Freely is no longer with his love, his special love that he wrote a whole record about. Right. He's dating a new gal. A friend of mine knows the new gal. That's all I'm going to say on that. And Ace is a man. He's a man about town. I mean, he's the space ace. So, he, you know, this, he may have, I'm, I'm the, nah, I was dating her. I dated her for like maybe two weeks. And then I went off to get some other chicks, you know. So I don't, I just don't know the, Okay, uh, spill the tea. Let's see. Uh, maybe a Patreon discussion. Tease it for a few more times. You might get a few more Patreon members. Spill the tea, man. I'm willing to bet it has something to do with Ace Freely since you were talking about well, it is about him when the thought came out. Okay, well, 
if in I'll just I'll just say this I'll just say this if in fact this is happens to be the case they must be having an open relationship that's all I'm going to say is if Ace Freely is dating a new gal and my friend knows this gal they must be in an open relationship that's all I'm going to say that's all that's it Oh, Johnny B. talking about the Midnight Special was a terrific show, but who remembers Night Flight? I remember Night Flight, and now I'm seeing ads. Have you seen that? Is he going to talk about it? It's like $39.99 for a year of Night Flight. I don't know what that means, but it keeps popping up on my when I'm scrolling. Thinking the world is coming to an end. And then, oh! And then, mm. You know, I'm losing it. Night flight. It came on Friday nights and would be on for like eight hours. They would have interviews, obscure music videos, and show independent films. I remember them doing a tribute to the band The Residents. Remember them? The dudes with the giant eyeball, eyeballs for heads. That doesn't ring a bell for me and showed one of their long-form music videos. I was so creeped out by it, I just stayed up all night until the sun came up. I was like nine or ten years old at the time. I don't remember that, the eyeball band. Now I've got to hunt it down. I got a bit of, oh, got a bit of the hiccups. A little bit more here, and then we're going to be done with this podcast. You'll be so happy you get back to your life and you're scrolling. And you're, uh, you know, they call it doom scrolling for a reason. I would do the night flight thing if I knew that the majority of the stuff that they're going to have on the night flight thing isn't over on one of the free channels. So if I was getting like a bunch of movies and, and music video, just all this kind of stuff... And the only way to know that for sure is, I guess, if you just get the app. And it's like $39.99 for a year, I believe it is. But can I do it on my TV? Is there an app for that? I don't know. Uh, Johnny B here, just ending it up. Just tightening up the end. Just uh, trimming off the, the, the split ends. Okay, this is already really long. Thank you for another great episode, Shane. Uh, in Shane. Oh, okay. See what I did there? I hope everyone has a terrific weekend. Until next time, don't let your egg roll. Very good. Very good. Two replies on that. Good job. And RB8733. RB87. Let's see, we got three hearts on there and ten comments. Well, you're getting another one today, buddy. Doing a jigsaw puzzle, listening to this in the background. The Metallica voices are cracking me up. Also, you can't hurry, you can't hurry Shane. LOL. That's right, you can't hurry me. Because you know what? Hurrying, this is what I learned today. I told myself this all day. Hurrying, and it's hard to say, spit out of your mouth. Hurrying is worrying. Anytime you're frantic and trying to get shit done, I gotta hurry, we gotta go. Hurrying is worrying. Stop hurrying, stop stressing, stop thinking about anything except for right at the very moment that you are living your life. Do not think about five hours from now, do not think about five hours in the past. If you spend all of your time In the moment, you will be so much happier. I promise you that. Hurrying is worrying. It's true knowledge. Um, what was the book that I just read? I read that one. It's all over TikTok. Don't believe everything your brain thinks. Great little book. Two hours long. Uh, Audio book. You can, you can get it. See, I'm not even selling it to you. Like they do on TikTok. But the, the, the gist of it, I'll tell you the, the entire gist of it. Thinking is the root cause of suffering. Let that roll around in your brain. Thinking is the root cause of suffering. Now I'm going to get a cease and desist. 
You shut your fucking mouth when you bring up my book because you just gave away, you just spilled all the beans. I apologize for all the swearing too, by the way. I, I feel like I've, I've just been ripping, letting loose lately with the F-bombs and stuff. It's not normal to me. Although I've got a friend that when I talk to him on the phone, every other word, sometimes I don't even listen to what he's saying because there's so many F-bombs in it, in like one sentence, that I go, oh yeah. And then I go, he said it 14 times. 14 times he said it. In one sentence. Let's do this. Come on, we're going to get out with it, with its song, okay? Breathe deep. Don't fret it. Don't sweat the big stuff or the small stuff. Be... And love yourself. That's another thing I'm going to tell you. Love yourself. You know, that doesn't mean selfish. That means appreciate yourself. Appreciate who you are. Appreciate who you can become. Appreciate who you have been. Accept your faults. Accept everything. Forget about it. Don't bother yourself with it. It's behind you. You're the only one that remembers those bad memories. You might say, hey, Sally, do you remember You remember that? She goes, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You say, but this has been up my craw for, for 20 years now. I wanted to apologize for that. Say, oh, it's been in your mind, but I have my own life, Joe. So I've been living it, and I haven't been concerned about whatever happened. Does any of this make any sense or what? Let's get out of here, for God's sakes. Let's get a song on, my God. None of that.